Welcome my friends. In this video, we will discuss arc length and the area of a sector of a circle. Let's start with arc length. Arc length, which is represented by the lowercase letter s, is some portion of the circumference of a circle. Here is a circle. If you have two points on the circle, we will create some angle between them if we draw radii out to those points. The length of the arc that connects those two points is what we call arc length. Or maybe an easier way to think about this or a more familiar way is it's some portion of the circumference of the circle. Of course, the circumference of the circle is all the way around the circle, so some portion of that circumference is what we call arc length. And we typically measure that counterclockwise. Now you may remember that the entire circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. We're going to use this idea to derive the formula for the arc length, which is some portion of the circumference of the circle. We can think of the angle theta as describing some portion of the circle. What I mean by that is, let's say that theta was equal to pi. Well, we know all the way around the circle is 2 pi. So if theta was pi, that would mean we would be halfway around the circle. And therefore, our arc length should be half of the circumference. Or if theta was pi over 2, that would mean we would have a quarter of the circle. We would be up here. So our arc length would also be a quarter of the circumference. So we can use this idea in general. And we can say that theta divided by 2 pi describes some portion of the entire circle. Just plug in some value for theta. For example, pi. If you plug in pi here, you would have pi over 2 pi. The pi's would cancel, and you would just have 1 over 2, or half the circle. And you could do this in general for any angle. So in general, theta over 2 pi is describing what portion of the circle we have. Arc length is some portion of the circumference of the circle. So we're determining here what portion of the circle we have with theta over 2 pi. So therefore, we can define our arc length as theta divided by 2 pi, which is some portion of the circle, multiplied by the entire circumference of the circle. Remember that arc length is some portion of the circumference of the circle, which is exactly what this is saying here. This is the portion of the circle, and this is the arc length of the entire circle, which is just the circumference of the circle. This allows us to simplify a little bit. We will cancel the two pi's here, and we will be left with just s is equal to theta times r, or more commonly written, s is equal to r times theta. Now note, in order to use this formula, theta must be expressed in radians. And that's because in order to derive this formula, we had 2 pi in our denominator, which represented the angle measurement of the entire circle. Okay? If we would have done this with 360 degrees, we could have gotten a formula in terms of degrees, but that wouldn't be quite as convenient. We would not have canceled the 2 pi. Let's look at a few examples. Let's say that a circle has a radius of 14 meters. We want to find the arc length, which is represented by s, created by a central angle of pi over 2. Now, you don't necessarily have to draw a picture to see what's going on, but it certainly doesn't hurt. So here is a picture. So they tell us that we have a radius of 14 meters, so the distance from the center to any point on the circle is going to be 14 meters. This would also be the radius up here. And they're telling us that we have an angle of pi over 2, which is just a 90 degree angle. And we are asked to find this arc length. So how will we do this? Well, we'll just plug into the formula. S is going to be equal to our radius, which is 14, multiplied by our angle theta in radians, which is pi over 2. So if we do that, we will kind of uh, be able to reduce our 14 over 2, and that will just leave us with 7 pi. If we'd like a decimal approximation, you could type in 7 pi into your calculator, and you would get approximately 21.99 meters. If you have a circle with a radius of 14 meters, and you have an angle of pi over 2, the arc length between those two points on the circle would be 21.99 meters. Let's try another problem. We have a circle, this time with a radius of 6 inches, and we want to find the arc length created by a central angle of 68 degrees. So here's what that picture would look like. We've got a radius of 6 inches, and we want to find the arc length created by a central angle of 68 degrees. Now be very careful here. Remember that this formula only works for radians. We do not have radians here, we have degrees. So if we want to use this formula, we will first have to convert 68 degrees to radians. Now hopefully you remember how to do this. Uh, the way I remember it is I always know I have to multiply either by pi over 180 or 180 over pi. Uh, so how do you remember which one it is? Well, if you want to go to radians, 
Radians are typically expressed in terms of pi, so you're going to want to introduce pi or multiply by pi in your conversion. So we are going to multiply by pi divided by 180. Okay, so 68 degrees multiplied by pi over 180. That will give you, if you simplify this, they're both divisible by 4, the 68 and the 180, you will get 17 pi over 45. So that means 68 degrees is the same thing as 17 pi over 45. And then we are ready to plug into the formula. So S is equal to R, which is our 6 over here, multiplied by our angle theta in radians, 17 pi over 45. And if you type that into your calculator, you will get about 7.12 inches. Now, if you're clever, there is a way to solve this problem without first converting to degrees. So we can use the same idea that we used to derive the original arc length formula, and that arc length is some portion of the circumference of the circle. So based on our angle theta here, we can determine what portion of the circle we have. We have 68 degrees divided by, well, the entire circle, which is 360 degrees. So our portion of the circle is 68 divided by 360. And then we can multiply that by the circumference of a circle, which is just 2 pi r, or in this case, 2 pi times 6. Okay, and if we multiply that out and you type that into your calculator, you should get the same answer, 7.12 inches. All right, let's look at one more arc length problem before we move on to the area of a sector of a circle. So here we have a circle that has a radius of 19 feet, and we need to find the radiant measure of the central angle theta created by an arc length of 20 feet. So notice the difference in this problem. In this problem, we already know the arc length. The arc length is 20 feet, so S is equal to 20 feet. We also know the radius of 19 feet, and we are trying to find the angle theta that kind of corresponds to those two numbers. Okay, so I can't really draw a picture here because I don't know what theta is. I don't know how big theta is, so it would be a little bit difficult to draw the picture now. I'll draw the picture after we have solved the problem. So if we want to solve for the angle theta, just plug the other two numbers into the formula. So S is 20, so that'll go on the left-hand side. R is 19, so that'll go in for R, and we need to solve for theta. So if we divide both sides by 19, the 19s will cancel, and we'll be left with theta is equal to 20 over 19. If you plug that into your calculator, you get approximately 1.05 radians for theta. And here's what that picture looks like. So if the radius is 19 feet and the arc length is 20 feet, then the angle that created that arc length must have been about 1.05 radians. Remember that one radian is about 57 degrees, so this is a little bit more than 57 degrees. All right, let's talk about the sector of a circle. A sector of a circle is just some portion of the area of a circle. Remember that arc length was some portion of the circumference, so now we're going to have some portion of the area. So here is what that looks like in a picture. So just like before, we're going to have two points in the circle. We're going to draw line segments out to that will have a length of the radius, and that's going to create some angle theta between them. The area, described here in red, is what we call the sector of a circle. We're going to use the same process that we used to derive the formula for arc length to derive the formula for the area of a sector of a circle. Recall that the area of a circle is a is equal to pi r squared. That would be if we had a sector that was equal to the entire circle. But we only have some portion of the circle. We have a sector of the circle. So we're going to have some portion of the entire area of the circle. The portion is going to be determined by our angle theta. Just like before, the portion of the circle that we have is theta divided by 2 pi. So therefore, the area of a sector of a circle is equal to the portion of the circle that you have, theta divided by 2 pi, multiplied by the area of the entire circle which is pi r squared. We can simplify this a little bit. The pi's will cancel, and we will be left with r squared times theta divided by 2 if we move this r squared out front. More commonly, you will see this written as 1 half r squared theta, as we can just move the 2 out front as a 1 half. So here is your formula for the sector of a circle. It is 1 half r squared theta. And just like in the arc length case, theta must be expressed in radians because we use 2 pi, which is a radian measure in the denominator, to derive the formula. Let's look at some examples. So a circle has a radius of 9 meters. A sector of the circle has a central angle of 3 pi over 4 radians, and we want to find the area of the sector. So here is the picture of what they have described. 
we have a radius of 9 meters, which is the distance from the center to this point, or also would be the distance from the center to this point. And we have an angle of 3 pi over 4, which is kind of like 3 quarters of the top half of the circle. So here is the formula for the area of a sector. It is 1 half r squared theta. So if we plug into the formula, we will have 1 half times r is 9, so we'll have 1 half times r squared, or 9 squared, times our angle, which is 3 pi over 4. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit, so the 1 half and the 4 can combine to become uh, 8. We'd have an 8 on the denominator here, and 9 squared is 81, so we will have 81 times 3 pi divided by 8. 81 times 3 is 243, so we would have the area of the sector equal to 243 pi divided by 8. This is an exact answer, but if we want a decimal approximation, you could plug this into your calculator, and you would get that the area of this sector is approximately 95.43 meters squared. Recall that the units for area are squared. Let's try another problem. So here we have a circle that has a radius of 7 centimeters. A sector of the circle has a central angle of 210 degrees. We need to find the area of the sector. So here is a picture of the situation. We have a radius of 7 centimeters, and we have an angle of 210 degrees. So remember that in order to use this formula, as well as the arc length formula, our angle had to be in radians. So our first step is going to be to convert 210 degrees into radians. So recall that to convert to radians, we have to introduce pi, because pi is typically included in the radian measurement of an angle. So we multiply by pi, and we divide by 180. So that will give us 210 pi divided by 180, which simplifies to 7 pi over 6. Now we are ready to plug into the formula. We have 1 half r squared, where r is 7, so we have 1 half times 7 squared times our angle, which is 7 pi over 6. We can square the 7 to get 49, and then the 2 and the 6 can be combined to be 12, so we will have 49 times 7 pi divided by 12, 49 times 7 is equal to 343, so we have 343 pi divided by 12. If you type this into your calculator, you can get a decimal approximation, which is about 89.8 centimeters squared. Let's look at one final problem. The area of a sector of a circle created by a central angle of pi over 6 radians is 12 centimeters squared. We need to find the radius of the circle. So notice, in this case, we are asked to find the radius. We are not asked to find the area of a sector. We already know the area of the sector. It is 12 centimeters squared. And we also know the angle theta, which is pi over 6. So here is the picture, if you like that, if that helps you out. Uh, the radius is unknown, but we do know the angle is pi over 6, and we know the area of the sector is 12 centimeters squared. So just plug into the formula. The area is 12, so we put in 12 right there. We have the 1 half, r squared, and then the angle theta is pi over 6. So we can kind of simplify this a little bit here. Uh, the 1 half and the pi over 6 simplify to pi over 12, and then we still have that r squared there. Uh, we can multiply by the reciprocal of this coefficient on r squared. We're trying to solve for r, so we want to get rid of this pi over 12. So if we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that, which is 12 over pi, that will simplify things a little bit. So we would have the 12 and the 12 here cancel, the pi and the pi here cancel, and we would be just left with over here, 12 times 12 is 144, and that is divided by pi, is equal to r squared. At this point, we need to cancel the square, so we can take the square root of both sides. We only really need the positive square root because we're only considering a positive radius here, so we don't have to take a plus or minus. The square root of 144 is going to be 12, and the square root of pi uh, is just the square root of pi. And we have r is equal to 12 over the square root of pi. This perhaps could be a sufficient exact final answer, although we do have that square root in the denominator, so maybe you want to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of pi over the square root of pi. We would get 12 square root pi divided by pi. Or if you type this into your calculator, you should get about 6.77 centimeters, which is the radius of the circle. All right, my friends, that wraps up this video related to arc length and the area of a sector of a circle.